How many phone calls did you make to bring folks out to breakfast? 250? Oh, wow. At least. <laughs> Let's hear it for Diane. Okay, so some of you may be here for the first time and, and the, the door is crowded as people are coming in. We received donations. This breakfast is free. But we received that in the past, well then we've got your name, we have your information, there's a yellow pad of paper, you just sign your name and put down the, the amount so that we can keep track of that uh, for, for, uh, for, for those folks. Okay, a uh, number of announcements I need to make this morning. Uh, who can tell me what yesterday was? All right, all right, let's hear it for all the women. And I, I can tell you, I've asked that question a number of times in different places this week, you know, and, and, and with some pretty active women, and I said, you know, what is March 8th? They look at me kind of strange, you know, it's not this, it's not that, you know, it's not taxes, it's not. You knew it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. International Women's Day. Okay. And this month is Women's History Month as well, to keep in mind all the, you know, if they only were the leaders, of, if y'all only were the leaders of the world, but of course that's coming, okay? <laughs> that's coming. I look forward to that day. I look forward to that day. Okay, uh, other announcements. The, uh, you know, if you have questions about these dates, you know, we've got a, a calendar over here on the wall. We try to keep that updated as well. Um, coming this week on Thursday the 14th, the African American Caucus will meet here at 6.30. Cynthia Farr is president. And uh, anything more I need to say about it, Vera? No. Well, be here, African American Caucus, you know, and, 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 and those of us who are a little bit paler can come too. Uh, we can't vote, but that's okay. We, we, we can come anyhow. Okay. On the 19th, ne next Tuesday, the 19th, we have the meeting of the senior Democrats here at 1 o'clock. And the speaker is going to be Rob Kreider, who is the uh, 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 leader, director, etc., cetera, of, of economic development here in Rowan County. And uh, so be here 1 o'clock, those of you who are available, 1 o'clock on Tuesday the 19th to hear about the stuff that, that's in process or planned for economic development here in Rowan County. That's th those two. Um, coming up on March 30th, Saturday morning, March 30th, we'll have a, a g gathering very similar to this. Saturday morning is our county convention. County convention. How many people here are precinct chairs or vice chairs? You know, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, or, or chairs or vice chairs. Okay, we, we have our county convention here. We'll probably have something to eat again. We do good things like that when we get together. And, and the, that, that's where uh, we, we have important stuff to take care of. Uh, we have elections to deal with at that point and addressing of issues, and we will try to have a speaker, although it's not as easy to get a speaker on that date, because there are two dates throughout North Carolina where all the counties have conventions. And so I've been trying to get somebody to as, as our speaker for that day, um, but unfortunately he couldn't come then, but I immediately tracked him, Trevor Fuller, is running for in the primary for uh, 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 U.S. Senate, 
He's from Mecklenburg County. He's on the county commissioners down there. April 13th, our April breakfast, we'll have Trevor Fuller. Just like we have Cal this morning, we'll have Trevor Fuller on the 13th. So mark your calendars. Second Saturday of the month, we have breakfast here. And it's good. And you can come back for seconds, you know, etc. Et, et okay, so got that announcement. Also on March 30th, a very important training conference it's called Dismantling the School to Prison Pipeline. Dismantling the School to Prison Pipeline will be led by people from the Youth Justice Project, and it will be from 1 to 3 at the Park Avenue Community Center at 632 Park Avenue here in Salisbury, Dismantling the School to Prison Pipeline. If you want to know more about that, Betty Jo, can you raise your hand? Betty Jo can give you more information about that, but that's something important for us to be involved and connected with. We're not just here to be Democrats to elect Democrats. That's important. But we're here to do that because of things like breaking up and dismantling the school to prison pipeline, saying to it that good health care exists for everyone. All the issues. That's why we elect Democrats. At least try to. Yes, Gail. Can you give us the date and time again? Real quiet, everybody. March 30th, same day as the county convention. County convention is here in the morning. 1 to 3, March 30th, Park Avenue Community Center. Okay. And all kinds of good things. You know, it, I, I am just so pleased to, to have to make all these announcements because there's good stuff happening here in Rowan County for Democrats, sponsored by Democrats, for information for, for everybody. And, and you know, beyond us here, uh, oh, oh, precinct chairs, remember, you know, keep your eye on, on your email. I'll be sending out the details on the webinar for all precinct officers. Okay, that'll be on the 17th. That's uh, Sunday afternoon, the 17th. And uh, Keith Townsend's over here, you know, our, our historian in residence, and he reminded me this morning again of the State Senior Democrats Convention in Wilmington. It will be May 4th and 5th, and uh, you know, Keith knows you know, issue-wise stuff that's going on there, and they always want to drag me into it because I happen to be the chaplain of the state senior Democrats. Yeah. All right. <laughs> 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 and, 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 anyhow, I have one other announcement, and then on to uh, you know the, the really important stuff. This morning, we, we have a guest. We have a guest, first time here, and it just so happens she came here to celebrate her birthday. <coughs> Dorothy Troutman, are you listening? Where are you, Dorothy? Dorothy Troutman, can you hear me? She, she, she's not. Ra raise her hand. Wait, 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 wait. She is 89 today, so let's sing happy birthday. I, the musicians are eating, but we can sing happy birthday without the musicians. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dorothy. Happy birthday to It's, you know, we're part of a group. We're part of a group that's connected to each other. We may not necessarily know everybody's names, but please be rest assured, and you can tell neighbors and friends, there are Democrats in Rowan County, okay? <laughs> there really are. And as Democrats in North Carolina here in Rowan County, there's some basic things which we kind of agree on. And in the middle of all this crazy junk that's going on, 
Uh, in terms of politics and government, I would just remind you of a few things that we believe in and are for. Justice. Truth. You know, there is a commandment that says, thou shalt not bear false witness. <laughs> thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. And there are various and sundry ways in which killing takes place. And I know a little bit about the Bible. I read it once or twice. <laughs> Protect the stranger in your midst. Somebody, you know, shot a, a, an email or something or other uh, out there this week saying, what do Democrats think about immigration? Well, we happen to be before, we're for people. Yeah. And we recognize every time we look in the mirror, we all came from someplace else. And even so much so, if you study anthropology, you will learn that <coughs> The Native Americans came over a land bridge from someplace to get here. They migrated in also. We are all migrants. And let's just keep that in mind. There are all kinds of details to work out. You know, the ice stuff and all kinds of other junk you know, going on. But we stand for basic stuff. Okay. And, and enough of me. You know, I, I, I have to go preach tomorrow. I won't do any more here. <laughs> Cal Cunningham, come on up here. <laughs> I, I, I met this guy, what, 2010. You know, you, yep. you, you, yep. you, were, you were running in the primary for, for U.S. Senate at that point. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right, so that, that's where I got to know his name and came to start respecting him, and, and now, my goodness, he pops up again, and he's running again, you know, and, and, and here he is. You know, I don't know all what you've been done, doing in between, but uh, tell I'll, us. I'll share a little bit. You, yeah, yeah, you do, do, do that, do that. Okay, Thank Cal you. Cunningham, primary candidate in North Carolina for <laughs> lieutenant governor, and, and I, if you forget that, I am, uh, I am thrilled to be back in Rowan County this morning. I'm grateful for the invitation. Uh, I'm particularly grateful to see so many people. I mean, this is a wonderful turn. You should give yourselves a round of applause for turning out on this, uh, on this morning. Now, I will tell you before I get into, uh, into my remarks that I have a very, very special place in my heart for Rowan County. And that's because at a very tender age, uh, it is Rowan County that elected me to the North Carolina Senate. I was on the ballot the same night that Maureen Coates uh, won her state house seat. I was on the ballot with Lita Belt, wonderful people. I think that maybe, maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, but Lita and I may have been the last two Democrats to represent Rowan County in the legislature. Am I wrong about that? <laughs> I certainly don't think there has been another Democrat state senator representing Rowan County since I was uh, representing the county, what, 16 years ago, Reverend, Reverend Freeman? It's uh, uh, just yesterday. But when on election night, when Rowan County numbers came in, and I won Rowan County 58 to 40 against a person from Rowan County, I knew I was going to the legislature because we won Davidson County big and we tied over in Iredale County. So I will forever be grateful for how Rowan County voted. Yay. And so thank you. I will say too, since, since Jeffrey mentioned it, that in 2010 when I was running for U.S. Senate and I, uh, I got the silver medal in a runoff primary, which under our system means you go home, right? But twice in the primary and in the runoff primary, I was proud to carry Rowan County. And so again, I have a very special place in my heart. I'm glad to be here, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to share with you a little bit about what I've been up to and what I think our state is, where I think we are, and where I think we need to go uh, as a people. So I, uh, grew up just across the river in Davidson County and grew up to believe very firmly in public service. Believe that we all owe each other 
an obligation, a commitment to be our brothers and our sisters keepers, to share uh, a sense of responsibility for each other, to honor those who have come before us, and to leave the world a better place for those who are coming along behind us. And so growing up, when I turned 18, I very logically walked into the Board of Elections and registered as a Democrat, right? And, and we all express, I think, a, a common belief about caring for each other uh, through how we serve each other. And we can do that in a lot of different ways. We can do it by showing up on a Saturday morning uh, and being part of the best political party in the world and that is the Democrat Party. We can do that like my, my wife does. She works for educators. She helps build capacity. She helps mentor young teachers, particularly in some of the hardest to staff schools. We could do that like my daughter who volunteers at the museum to take care of animals. She's an animal lover. We could do that like my son who's kind of following in my footsteps in Boy Scouts. Uh, I'm Though very proud that he is working on his eagle project today. Oh, All right. Right. I mean, as a dad, I just have to say that that uh, that's special. Uh, I didn't quite get there. I turned 16 and uh, had other priorities. All of a sudden, but but growing up, uh, my service journey did start in a similar way in church, doing mission work, uh, in scouting. I went off to Carolina. I saw my friend George L. Curry. Uh, here earlier with the Carolina uh, jersey on. I've got my Carolina pin on. Apparently there's a basketball game tonight. Uh, <laughs> I'll be glued to. Uh, um, uh, preparing to cheer for my team. I was involved in student leadership there. It's where I met uh, the person who is here today as my campaign manager, Lainey Emiston, who ran my campaign for student body president, and we won. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Deborah. You let a woman handle it. So, the, uh, so uh, after college uh, and law school, I uh, moved back uh, here to Davidson County, across the river, was elected to the state senate, was the youngest state senator in uh, many generations, and worked hard to honor that by working to raise teacher pay, lower class sizes. I was co-sponsor of groundbreaking uh, clean air legislation. I worked I worked with folks like uh, Lita Belt and, and Lorene Coates to preserve open space and parkland and farmland, particularly uh, for parts of the state uh, like Rowan County, like Iredale County, like Davidson County. Was very proud of that service. Uh, was one of the architects of voter-owned elections to work to get money out of our judicial elections so that they would run uh, with without having to raise money from the very lawyers who were appearing in front of them. I was very proud of that service, but like we have experienced, there was redistricting, and they chopped the district up, and they took Rowan County and Iredell County out of what I would have been representing, put me in Davidson County, and September 11th happened. So I joined the Army Reserves. In the time since I joined the Army Reserves, I've done three active duty tours, including Iraq and Afghanistan during my time in service. I uh, have been a prosecutor who's worked to take on the challenge of sexual assault, hold corrupt government contractors accountable overseas, and work on some of the most important challenges facing our service. I continue today to teach special operators at Fort Bragg on the law of armed conflict. I'm very proud to have uh, spent time in, in uniform. The last six years, uh, and since the U.S. Senate campaign, I've been working to build an environmental company, working on the challenge of climate change, working on recycling, making sure that we uh, use the things that we buy uh, and put them to the right effect, not putting them in a landfill, recycling the clothes or repurposing things that we can repurpose. We've grown that company. I now have 115 employees, all of them covered by health insurance, incidentally, in part, with the help of the Affordable Care Act. I have learned what it means to make payroll and how challenging it can be to care for and work and be uh, and be a leader in a private company, one whose purpose is to do good for the environment, but also uh, uh, we've got to make payroll uh, every two weeks.
It's been a great learning experience. So after Roy Cooper was elected, I answered his call to be vice chair of the Governor's Crime Commission. And there, I've been working to issue grants to nonprofits that help deal with the challenge of sexual assault, that help uh, our law enforcement have the tools that they need in order to uh, make sure our communities are safe. We've issued recommendations in the last few weeks on school gun safety, how we mitigate the risks of a gun incident in our schools in North Carolina. And I led a task force on reforming prisons about making sure that we care for those who are coming out, that they are carefully brought back into society in a way that they regain their dignity, have the tools that they need for jobs and to make sure that they're successful in, in re-entry. So never lost the bug to serve and have worked hard to make the world better in my own little ways. But I'm telling you folks, the challenges are coming at us as hard and fast as they've ever come, right? I mean, in the last two years, we've had two 500-year floods hit North Carolina in two years. My kids are going through active shooter drills in schools. It scares me as a parent. It scares them as kids. Meanwhile, the teachers are passing the hat to just have supplies for the classroom. We're better than this, aren't we? Go back across the river to, to Lexington. I never imagined growing up how much an economy could change, how and a community based on furniture could lose that entire backbone and all the jobs associated with it. They are literally taking down the furniture buildings now. They've been vacant for, for years, but they are physically taking them down. Meanwhile, we have so-called leaders who are agitating all manner of divisions, stoking racial hatred, trying to agitate our differences rather than find ways to bring us together, not dealing with the challenges of the rural and urban divides, the, the gaps between the small towns and the fast-growing urban areas. In the last 12 months here in North Carolina, notwithstanding the headlines, Almost 40% of our families have missed a major bill payment, have missed a car payment, have missed a rent payment, have missed a, a medical payment. In America today, 9 million Americans are more than 90 days behind on a car payment. This economy is not working for everyone. This economy is not taking everybody to the promise of America. And so what do we do about it? Well, around my household, we've got the news going in the morning, and we're scrambling to get out the door on time to get to school. We've got Morning Joe playing, and Donald Trump's been up to something. He's been up all oh. night tweeting about something. And, oh, about, yeah. And so, so my daughter sits there at the breakfast table, and she taps on the table. She just taps. And she looks at me and she says, what are you going to do about it, Dad? <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, that's a pretty profound question. Well, aren't we all called to do our part alone to try and make sure that we build this better world? Here's how I answer Caroline. I answer Caroline the same way I tell you. I am running for lieutenant governor. I am intent on being part of the solution in this state. I want to work with Governor Roy Cooper on the major issues of our time. I want to be part of a next generation leadership to help drive this state forward. I want to make sure that we have a lieutenant governor who's one heartbeat away from governing this state, who's aligned with the priorities, the progressive priorities that we share and that have made us proud to be North Carolinians over time. I'm running because I believe in the promise of public service to make this world a better place. And I'm running because, because 10 years ago, 10 years ago uh, this year, uh, I came back from Iraq after being gone for a year. And I came in through Fort Benning, Georgia. And after the band had stopped playing and the banners had been taken down, 
I was reunited with my family. And I took out a couple of, we had our own ceremony. I took out a couple of my patrol caps and I put them on Caroline and Will's heads. And I pinned my Iraq campaign medal on Caroline. And I pinned my bronze star on Will's chest. And I saluted those two kids first for their service and sacrifice that year as well, but also as a commitment as, as their parent to not rest until I could confidently say that I was leaving this world in a better place for them than we had inherited. And in the last 10 years, fellow Democrats, I can't say that we are there. We have so much more to do to build the state and the country that we know we should have. Now, as your lieutenant governor, there are some things that I care passionately about that I'm going to work on every single day. I'm going to be a champion for children and for families. This starts with education. This starts with early childhood education, investing from the earliest years where we know that those investments pay for themselves over a lifetime. I was proud in the state senate to be one of the votes to create what we call now NC Pre-K. And in the last, and in the time since I cast that vote, 350,000 at-risk children have gotten more care and more help and more education than they otherwise would have gotten. But we've turned away an equal number of children who need help just as much. I want to make sure that we expand early childhood, give well care, give nutrition, give education to every uh, family. I want to make sure every classroom has a well-paid teacher. I want to make sure that we aspire again, like we've been challenged before, that if we can be first in education progress, we can be first in education period in America. We should aspire to be the best. I want to make sure that everybody can get access to higher education too. Grappling with the cost of college debt. The last two bills I filed in the state senate before I left would have created scholarships for our community college students and our university students. You keep an AB average, you stay out of trouble, and you do community service or work study, the state of North Carolina ought to pay your tuition bill because higher education is that important for the future of our state. I'm going to be a champion for families. This starts with building an economy that works for so many more, that works for everybody, that grows from the middle class out. <clears throat> you realize we haven't had a minimum wage increase in North Carolina in 10 years ago, uh, 10 years come July? In 10 years, we are way past time to raise the minimum wage. Who's with me on raising the minimum wage? I want to make sure that we do equal pay for equal work and that North Carolina becomes the state that puts America over the hump and adopts the Equal Rights Amendment to the United States We have entirely too many challenges facing our environment and the quality of life that we lead. Deborah can tell you, 1,000 418 days is 1,418 days too many to be drinking bottled water in North Carolina because the environmental impacts of pollution that the polluters ought to pay to clean up. I want to make sure that we advance criminal justice reform in North Carolina. Part of the calls that I have adopted as vice chair of the Governor's Crime Commission. I want to make sure that people aren't locked up just because they can't pay bail. And I want to make sure that folks coming out of prison come back into society, that we make sure that they have the dignity of a job, that they can get back on their feet and get their civil rights restored. I want to make sure that no talent is left behind in our state. Do you realize, folks, yeah, thank you, yes. <laughs> Do you realize that with just a couple of votes and a signature, 
that North Carolina could extend health insurance to over 500,000 citizens. We are paying for it today. We should have universal health care. We should. We should make sure that all 10 million North Carolinians are covered under the blanket of health insurance. And one of the key ways to close the gap for those who don't have insurance today is to expand Medicaid. We should do it. It would create 40,000 new jobs. It would cover 150,000 opioid dependent people. Law enforcement will tell you. Law enforcement will tell you one of the key ways that we can break the epidemic of addiction to opioids is to make sure that our people have the continuity of care that they need, that when they do ask for help, that we can make sure that they're getting what they need. And that starts with expanding Medicaid. There are 17,000 veterans today who would be insured tomorrow if we would accept back the federal money and expand Medicaid. It is past time for us to do this. I appreciate the governor's leadership on it. We have seen our Democrats in the state house and state senate sponsor these bills. I'm hopeful that we can do this in this session. Now, folks, I am a proud progressive. I am a dyed-in-the-wool Democrat. I am a patriot. And I am a North Carolinian. this state is better than we've been yet. We know what we can be if we work together, if we build. This party has a very bright future. The leaders that we develop, that we elect, are the ones who move this state forward. Put me in that camp. I'm going to be a go forward Lieutenant Governor. I'm going to make sure that we don't rest until we take on the biggest challenges of the day, until every voice is heard. You know, we've got a lot of government reform to do. We've been through this redistricting stuff. Gerrymandering is robbing citizens of, the, of their voices. We have corporate, I won't, by the way, am not taking corporate PAC money in this campaign as a way to say, I know we can do better in our politics and I don't ever want you to question a decision I make because of where the money might have come from. Thank you. But it's only one of several very important steps that we have and we need to take to break gerrymandering, make sure votes are counted, make sure that hijinks like we just saw down in the 9th Congressional District are smoked out and prosecuted and that there's accountability for wrongdoing. We need to make sure that our early vote sites are open longer, that more people recognize the importance of their vote, and that we don't implement policies that stand between us expressing our preferences at the ballot box and them being counted and we knowing that it was done right and it was fair. We've got a lot to do, folks. We've got a lot to do to turn the corner on a fever that has gripped this state and this nation. And all of us, all of us uh, could just be cynical about it. We could turn off the tube. We could check out. We could just say nothing I do could make a difference. Or we could hear the voice of a 16-year-old of a daughter tapping on the table. And rather than curse the darkness, we can light a candle. Come on, come on. I have been blessed to grow up in the best state in the nation, right here in North Carolina. I was born in a little trailer park over in Forsyth County while my parents were still in school. I had to borrow money from my great grandmother to make it to payday. And my dad became a lawyer, and I grew up at his feet, listening to how he would take on the biggest challenges for the smallest clients, making sure there was a level playing field for everybody. This is the tradition I come from. It's why when I came home, I offered to serve in the Senate. It 
was proud to do that. It's why I said yes when the Army came calling. It's why I've been working to build an environmental company, why I said yes to Governor Roy Cooper. I've been blessed to be raised in the best state in America. I've learned optimism. I have learned hope. I have learned tolerance. And I've learned that things get better if you love them enough <coughs> to stand up and fight. That's what yes. we're going to do. Yes. Thank yes. you. Okay, we have time for a few questions. Do we have